Welcome to the Road to Redemption podcast with your host, Cam Williamson. Each week, Cam sets out to shatter the labels and stigmas associated with mental health awareness by giving life lessons and raw overviews of events happening around the world. All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your grateful host, Cam Williamson. It is fantastic to be back with you. Look, I'm going to restructure the pod just a little bit. I've enjoyed the new way that we've been doing things, talking about breaking news and trending events and whatnot. So we are going to talk about those things. But first, I'm going to start every episode off, or maybe we'll do it vice versa some episodes where in this one, I'm going to talk about mental health and a topic first, and then we'll get to current events and stuff like that. So today, I'm going to talk about my relationship with surrendering in life and surrendering surrendering on your spiritual journey um it's been something that i've struggled with i think it's the biggest struggle whether it be in religion or spirituality in everyday life if you're not considered to be a spiritual person by yourself it's tough right and i've talked about it for a long time on this show how we have expectations we have insights and we have goals we have dreams we have from the time your consciousness came to be and your ego and your consciousness met and you started to form an idea of who you are and other people told you what you should be and you form those two things together and then life happens and those things don't work out, whether they be good or they be bad for you in the way that you perceive them. Um, <clears throat> if you're old enough, you get to a place, I think it's in your late 20s, early 30s, where you you try to hold on to everything that was. You try to maybe rekindle with old friends. You try to look at old hobbies that you used to have nostalgia kind of sets in and you really find comfort in it right and it's hard because you go that is who I was that is very much who I was and all all the people places and events that encompass me I don't want to discredit that and I don't want to let that go because then I don't know who I am and I, I found myself really asking my myself like who am I now if I'm not all the trauma and I'm not all the abandoned you know, people that left me behind and stuff like that. And I am just who I am now. What does that require of me? What requires me to surrender? And I kept coming to this word surrender. Every expectation of life, if I'm going to have a future, because my whole life, I've been plagued by the past, because that's all I focused on. I've never had an idea of my future. And it's either because when I was deep in addiction, I didn't think I would live long enough or I would lose so many people in my life that I just didn't have anyone to build a future around. And I think that was kind of the key point as I was trying to build my future around other people and other things. So over the last three years, really, I've just learned to get to know myself. And in that, I've learned that I'm a lighthearted, fun person to be around. Uh, I have a lot of opinions on things. I have an ability to think outside the box that people tend to appreciate, um, I notice. And I love being creative with my show and other forms of content that I create. And I was like, I don't have to really be anything else. I'm a good father. I'm a good husband. I'm there for people that I care about. And I've always done my very best to be an opportunist to the point of if someone's around me, I just want to make their day better in that way. So then I, you know, hit this spot when I turned 30 that it was like, I've let so many people down and I've done so many situations wrong. Can I remedy some of them? And I've tried. I really did try. And and I think even then it just gives you a new set of, okay, well, this one went well, this one didn't go well, let me focus on the one that didn't go well because now maybe I can still fix that one. And it becomes this constant like, okay, what can I do? What action can I take now? And sometimes you just sit after taking all these acts that end you uh, end up on all these confusing, windy, turny roads that you're like, I still don't really know where I'm going. I've, maybe I've rekindled some things and some doors I've left closed and 
you know, some things have just chosen to let be what they are. Now, that doesn't mean that we're never going to have emotions or feelings or thoughts around those topics again, but it just means that, and this is where I guess I'll get to the point, in surrender, I learned that it doesn't have to be this big letting go process. For me, it ended up being that, I guess, over a span of like <clears throat> two years. I had to learn what my self-worth was and what my idea of love was and keeping people around me that are able to reciprocate um, what I think to be respectful relationships and stuff like that. So I came to this place where I go, and and I'll tell you guys about this experience I had just, I guess, while I was meditating. This weird marriage ceremony came in my head. And this scene kind of started to play out where it wasn't me and it wasn't anyone else. But there was a marriage happening. And there was this energy that felt like me every day prior to this, the one I was in. <clears throat> and the person I was marrying was every situation, person... And, you know, painful moment that I was carrying with me. And for the first time in my life, I allowed my energy and that energy to fully marry each other in a ceremonial way of you can now be together forever. You and everything you ever wanted, everything you ever dreamed of, the things that went well, the things that didn't go well, every idea of life. In this moment, you can marry those things. You can have those things. They can be real. Just feel it. There you go. There it is. Everything. Even the stuff you can't think about. Just let your heart be content in all those things for a moment. And again, this isn't a voluntary thought train that I'm having. This is just something that's going on. And again, there's no faces to these individuals, but it's just this kind of swirling thing that I, that I'm, I know what's going on. And the last part of it is, you know, you may now kiss the bride. And the part of myself kissed that part. And I started fucking bawling. And it was like, finally, I just felt this thing where it was like, finally, it can be that. It doesn't have to be any more than that. The, the thoughts, the emotions, the ideas they can all be validated in one moment and then you may kiss the bride and the two things form together and then I felt a serious disconnect and I watched the happy couple energy fade away as I stood and again it wasn't me but it was just this energy of who I was refreshed and and clean with no expectations, no ties to anything, no no feeling like I had to do better for anyone or be someone else for anybody or be anybody else for myself. It's like, yeah, I've got a lot of shit I got to work on, but I don't have to be any certain way for anybody. I can just be the best version of me that I can obtain. And that's my daily goal. So like to obsess over how everyone else is acting and what they're doing and how they're treating me, well, I can respond to those things in love according to when I'm encountering them. But to go out and, like, force a bunch of interactions and social connections and, you know, um, I don't know, just ideas of life. I, I think it's much easier to flow with life when... Again, you give yourself a moment to go, hey, everything I ever did want was valid. It wasn't stupid and it wasn't childish and it wasn't whatever. Sure, it didn't work out and maybe some things never will. And, you know, who knows what the future holds or what we'll, you know, all be doing. But it's like for a moment, you don't need permission from anyone to sit in yourself and go, hey, I've had a lot of feelings over my life. And the longer your life gets, the more feelings and, you know, passionate shit happens to you and you could sit and truly at the end of it I just smiled and I was like god this is the first time in my life that I've ever felt whole where I didn't I didn't have to make an excuse for loving anybody or uh, and choosing to walk away from anyone or 
I didn't need an excuse for anything because everything was valid in one moment to me. And for the first time, that was good enough. And it allows me now to walk around with no expectation. When I'm driving through traffic, I don't expect anyone to let me in or to merge the way I think they should merge or anything like that. I control my space and I, and I don't worry about if my toddler is throwing a tantrum in the back. I understand she's a young developing kid now and I, I'm not trying to force her to be this thing that walks out in society and knows exactly how to act all the time it's like yeah when she's in front of me I, I'm her father and I'm gonna do my best to father her in love but it's not this I'm panicking at all times because I feel inside myself that I'm failing as a father because she's not acting perfectly all the time it's like that's a lot of pressure to put on everybody so again that's how I found a surrender uh, it was kind of just a cool moment that I thought I'd share with you guys and now we will get into current events. All right, there was a fight over the weekend at Knott's Berry Farms um, to the point where they had to close three hours early. Bunch of rowdy teenagers. I guess it, it, it was the thing where that night um, either a group or a bunch of groups of teenagers were supposed to go there and hang out, and it just kept being like a big issue for the police. So they were saying, hey, this has become such a thing. We're going to shut it down. And I think the reason this even made the news is Knott's Berry Farms is pretty much known to be a very nice, you know, quaint family place. So that's kind of wild. Ricky Martin apparently had allegations uh, some point last year from his nephew claiming that he was trying to or did have a romantic relationship with him to which Ricky Martin is adamantly denying it. I think Ricky Martin caught a lot of heat when he came out saying he was gay. And then I think now in 2022... When it's just easy to try to like throw a sexual allegation at someone. And we've kind of seen what happens with Kevin Spacey and R. Kelly when they're talking about minors. It's easy for anyone to hear it and go, oh, see ya, bye. And now we're talking about like inside the family type shit. I, I again, that's a stretch. And they were saying that this person clearly has mental health issues and like it's very sad what they're going through, but there's no weight to any of this. So I don't want to give it a bunch of weight, but it was something that made, um, you know, the news over the weekend. Kodak Black was arrested. Uh, I did not know that his real name is Bill K. Capri. Uh, so let, let's talk about what Kodak was doing that morning. Kodak was driving around on an expired license. He had excessive tent, allegedly. This is all alleged. Expired registration. 75000 in cash. And 31 Oxycontin tablets. Hey, Kodak, or Mr. Capri, what the fuck are you doing? You, and again, Lil Boosie just got arrested. I think it was yesterday, or he got pulled over. He did not get arrested. He got pulled over, and they were harassing him, I think. They were saying that the plate on his car wasn't visible enough, and it looked fine, whatever. But Boosie starts throwing this big scene. I ain't scared, bro. He thought for sure he was going to fucking jail. And he starts putting himself in the jail mindset. I'm going to fight the first motherfuckers I see. Now, again, Boosie is acting the worst possible way you could act during a traffic stop. He's lucky they let him get back in the car and drive off. But we're talking about Kodak Black. Kodak, 75 grand cash, 31 oxys, expired registration, expired license, and you got tent on that shit. What the fuck are these guys doing? I forget who it was. There was an old comedian that made a joke that was like, you're driving, or Bill Burr. He's like, you're driving around with an unregistered Glock in the car with an, uh, with an expired license. What the fuck are you doing? That's five to 10 mandatory. Get that the fuck out of here. And it's like, he has nobody in his team before they get in this car to go, hey, Kodak, hey, dumbass, you have no license. That vehicle's registration is not current because you've been on tour for the last fucking three years over one hit song, which I don't really understand. Remember when you bought that car and we told you that was going to be a problem for you and they were going to pull you over a lot because that tent you put on, you said, I don't give a fuck, I'll pay the ticket. Well, you didn't expect that your license was going to be expired because, again, you haven't been around to fucking fix that shit. And what the fuck are you driving around with 75 grand in cash for? Hey, wire transfer some shit, okay? Because guess what? You also have 31 Oxycontin tablets. Hey, they're going to think you're going to what? Distribute those. Thank God you didn't have bags around you. Jesus fucking God. 
What are we talking about? How does this stuff keep happening? And I have to grab my phone only because I don't remember the name of the spot in Indiana exactly that got um, shot. There was a mall shooting last night, Greenwood Park Mall, where four people um, <clears throat> were shot, apparently, including the or were killed, including the shooter. What are we going to do about these things? More footage comes out of Uvalde. Um, people have been blowing my TikTok up because of the clip I shared of showing that officer checking his phone. Everyone's saying, hey, his, his wife was in there. He was talking to his wife. Yeah, his wife died in there. So, again, he should be as pissed as anyone else about the negligence that went on. And, again, who knows? Checking your phone right now is not getting to them. So, again, I'm not victim shaming or whatever people want to try to say. I'm making observations. I can, exp I, again, and I said at the end of last time's episode, I can understand why you would do that. Hey, this shit's going down. I love you. I get that. Seeing if she texts back. Again, he's following orders. It's a stressful situation. I wasn't going at that guy. But we now see, like, his wife died in that shooting it's fucking terrible i mean it's fucking terrible so then you have this mall where at 6 p.m on a sunday they're saying this young guy with a rifle just walks in and dot 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 i mean we're gonna keep covering these things to make people aware of it but i i can't help and i hate to do this but i can't help but think of the moment that rittenhouse was found not guilty and I went live on air and I go, I think this is bad for us. I think we're about to see a massive influx of 18 or young kids, young boys specifically, taking up guns and doing heinous shit with it. Because now they think that there's a chance somehow through the judicial system, whether it be mental instability or whatever, that they're going to take a walk on it. We set a dangerous precedent. Again, I'm not saying I wanted Rittenhouse to sit in jail. I'm not saying that. I don't... Uh, that set situation is separate. He's, he wasn't an active shooter. He wasn't a school shooter. He was a different situation. I was just saying for young kids, they look for any excuse. These kids are fucking deranged, man. It, the, whatever this other kid is, Nicholas Cruz, I think, from the Parkland school shooting, and now everyone wants to share his social media footage around where he's talking about my name is Nicholas Cruz and I'm going to be the next school shooter. Bah, 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 bah. I'm tired of all this shit. And it's like, I remember when the first one of those came out, when that guy in Cali walked down the street and just started mowing motherfuckers down. And they said he had affluenza. His dad was like a super successful director or something. He mowed shit down because women didn't want to be with him. And they said he was an incel. It was during all that, all that shit. Everyone has these reasons as to why these young guys are doing this shit I, I think it's pretty easy why they're doing it they're able to get guns too easy powerful high capacity rounds the kid in Uvalde fired off 147 rounds against what was it 300 and some odd law enforcement officials ended up on the scene against one kid with a rifle and again I know because I've been in it and I'm still a second amendment advocate to a point, but I know the argument is always and will always be when a school shooting happens. If there was one good guy with a gun against the one bad guy with a gun, well, now it's even. We had 300 officers. Again, I'm not saying in the moment, like, it's not okay to try to check on your wife who you know is in the building, but like, yo, negligence costs lives. And again, you think that officer is probably not going to bed every night going, what if I were to just said fuck my job and ran forward without regard would i be dead with her well, who knows what would have happened like he's gonna play that out too but again people thought that i've been paranoid for a while people have shut up talking about me being paranoid since the pandemic has really gone down but i've been saying for a while now like y'all are still wild for taking your kids to malls <clears throat> there's an event in my town on Tuesday, where a very famous kids YouTube show character is going to be in town. And I promised my kid I would take him. And I'm so fucking nervous. Because if I, you know, I can't even imagine. Now I have to think in the head of a psycho, like Criminal Minds, where I'm like, if I was a psycho with a rifle in Tennessee, 
what reason would I have to show up to a convention, to an event where this popular YouTube star, you know, kids YouTube star is showing up and start spraying waste to these people? And how realistic would it be that I get my family out of there? And then now I have to start thinking like that in total disregard of other people. I don't want to think like that. So what? My kid can see a YouTube star? But it's like, okay, do I do that or I deprive her of her, deprive her, of her childhood? Fuck, man. We can end it on a positive note. There's a cool video that everyone seems to love of Drew Barrymore outside in the rain. I'll play that now. It's pretty cool. <laughs> She's having a good time. And I, I agree with her. I've said it in the past. The rain is awesome. I, in my older rain. life, have um, kind of disconnected from it. It's cool to see her enjoying that moment. So good on you, Drew. Guys, I love you so much. I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a good week.